I gotta tell you a funny story, uh, about me. <laughs> well, this is about me. <laughs> and what a dork I could be sometimes. <laughs> So back in October of 17, 2017, my wife and I went over to uh, to England and France. We, uh, we went, were celebrating our 35th wedding anniversary. And uh, we stayed in London the first, uh, like a week, and then we went down to Paris for a week and saw some, some really cool stuff. Anyway, our first day, the day we arrived in in, in London, we uh, we came in from the airport, we, we managed to finally get to our hotel all kinds of delays and traffic and it was a mess but we got there we got on a train and headed north out of town and went to go visit um a couple of friends uh, and uh, it was actually the first time we've met face to face but uh had a great great time and uh, this guy is a blacksmith so we came back and we did our things and one of the days we were there uh we went over to uh, to Buckingham. That's how that's how we in the states say it, Buckingham, as opposed to probably Buckingham, Buckingham, Buckingham. Uh, that's probably the way it's said over there. Um, why can't you guys just say things right over there? <laughs> anyway, um, we, my wife and I went up to uh, to Buckingham, and we uh, we spent I don't know a couple hours there doing a tour, and. When we were done, it was still relatively early. I mean, it was probably 2 o'clock in the afternoon, something like that. And we decided we would wander around the area. And, and as we did, we, we uh, thought, well, let's, let's make it over to, to Westminster Abbey and uh, see if we can catch this a thing called Eve, Evensong, Evesong, even something. It's, anyway, it's a, way to get into, it's a way to get into Westminster Abbey without pan. <laughs> if you ever, if you want to do that. Um, and it's actually pretty cool because uh, it's not very often that a guy like me gets to get into a place like Westminster Abbey and just hear, uh, you know, the worship and the and the the acoustics of the place. It's pretty. It's pretty cool. Um, so anyway, we're coming out of Buckingham and uh, we're walking down, and then we, we get onto uh, Victoria Street, and we're walking up towards uh, to Westminster Abbey. When we come to this spot right here, and I look up. And there's a sign on the building that says, you know, this is Great Smith Street. And, uh, of course, you know, I looked at that and having just come from visiting a buddy that's a, that's a blacksmith. And I was, at the time I was doing a lot more blacksmithing. I haven't stopped. Doesn't look like, it. well, it looks like I have, but I haven't really stopped. I love it. And I'm going to get back to it <laughs> someday. Um, Anyway, I, I just come off that, and I was, it was still, I was kind of in the midst of, of learning myself and, and playing around. So I sort of romanticized this sign, right? I thought, oh, what a cool sign, you know? Look at how they've honored these, <laughs> look at how they've honored these blacksmiths, you know, of old. Uh, they, uh, they gave them a, they named a street after them. They gave them, they gave them a library so they could learn to read. They gave them a, a church they could, they could worship. They gave them, they even gave them a place they could take a bath. I mean, what a great thing, right? <laughs> that isn't what it's about. <laughs> the street is named after a guy named Thomas Smith, Sir Thomas Smith, who was uh, an architect. Uh, back in the mid 1800s, and he uh, did a lot of prominent buildings in that area. He restored St. James's Church, and he worked on, I mean, a lot of stuff in that area. And so the street is actually named after Thomas Smith. Um, and if you look at the map, which I didn't do at the time, you also see things like Great Peter Street, Great College Street, Great George Street. There's even a Little Smith Street <laughs> out there. But that doesn't change the fact that I thought that the sign, that sign right there, was pretty darn cool. And um, I immediately thought of my buddy up north and thought, you know, it'd be a cool thing for me to be able to make for him. Well, here it is now, middle of June, so I'm only uh, six months from there. I think it's not terrible. And uh, I, I'm going to, I want to make the sign. So what I did, is came home and I spent a fair amount of time on the, on the computer and modeled up what I think is a pretty good 
Let's get this if we can get it right there. Recreation uh, of that sign. You can see both of them. Um, it's pretty close. That hand was a pain, but I got it. So um, I thought, let me go ahead and make up this sign, make this plaque up, model it up, print it, uh, and see if I can't cast it. So that's sort of the backstory. That's me being a dork. Let's see if we can't get this thing cast. All right, I, this is actually going to be a little bit tricky because um, it's too big for my flask. <laughs> so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to end up putting the sprue in kind of over in this orientation um, with a very short runner. Um, we'll, put a, uh, we'll put a feeder across here and two large gates in on the top side. I think that's the best I'm going to be able to do. I'll put my pour basin out over here somewhere. But... Um, yeah, I don't have a whole lot of room for anything else. I don't want the metal to run forever, so I think that's what we're going to end up doing. Get this little facing sand on here. I'm actually kind of liking this uh, new method that I'm doing where I have just a little bit of new Petra Bond facing everything give it the strength, but then I can just use all my old stuff for filling the mold. Uh, it's already trying to come out. <laughs> Spurs go in there. I'm going to put two vents in. I don't have a lot of good places for them, so I'm going to stick them in over here. And again, it's just so I want the aluminum to be able to flow through there without having to build up any kind of uh, pressure as it's going across. All right, we're all rammed up. I. Go ahead and remove this stuff, the vent. Uh, get out of there. Okay, now we need to cut in our um, pouring basin. I don't have a ton of room, so I'm going to do it. I'm actually going to do it over here, I think. And as always, my basin is right at 30 millimeters deep. And we're going to take a, we're going to cut a ridge about 10 millimeters from the bottom of that for, us to, for our metal to flow over. We're going to pour into the basin and flow over this ridge. The lines go from edge to edge from our sprue over to our basin. Nice and smooth, don't want any turbulence, don't want any... Alright. There it is. So, we have our basin cut. Got our vents in. Let's open this thing up and see if we can't cut us some gates and runners and whatever else is. Let's just pray that it comes apart. Nice and heavy. All right, don't look bad. So there's a vent for that side. Vent for that side. I'm gonna cut in our gates on the cope as well. Fairly good sized gate because this is a big part. Runner in the drag. 
nice and straight. You see that? Again, I'm doing lots of volume here just because I want to make sure I don't run out of metal. Come across from our sprue into here, into the runner. <clears throat> now the question I have to myself is, do I need a feeder? What the heck? Let's try it without a feeder. Why not? What do I got to lose? All right, we're going to try this for the very, very, very first time in my life. Got a little hole drilled in there. I got a tip on this thing. Down pressure. I'm seeing some movement. That may be horrible. I don't know. to find out right now. And I got a couple of spots that are that corner fell apart, caught in there. Some of the letters, some of the letters you can see held there hold their sand so I think we may try to cast it anyway Alrighty, well, as always, I am too impatient to wait for this to cool off to look, so we're going to open it up and see what we got. Let's just turn it right over here. Let me get this thing cleaned up. I will uh, come back and show it to you when we get it. Uh, Alrighty, well, here it is cleaned up. Uh, <clears throat> let's look at a couple things first before I kind of really get into this thing. Um, the pour is obvious, uh, as always, my basin, the ridge down low, um, tapered sprue coming in. This one, I got away with this, and I guess I'm going to, uh, lesson learned, right? I mean, all I did was a, um, basically just a runner across to feed in the two gates. It didn't do anything as far as a feeder uh, anywhere. These are just vents just to let the metal flow out of the part. Um, and it seemed to it seemed to cast it pretty well. I mean, I'm not seeing any any places where it got thin or shrunk or anything like that. So I'm happy with that. I don't I guess that's good to know when you're doing something this thin. Maybe you don't really need a um, uh, you know a big feeder uh, to to keep it full. Now that said, um, I don't know that I'm happy. <laughs> Let me see if I can bring this up closer to you and see if you can see this. Yeah. There are places on here like where this corner kind of collapsed. Uh, I'm not real thrilled with what happened right down there. Uh, let's see what else. R A A A. You can see that those things didn't, we didn't end up with um, a depression that are there. And I, so I got some, this is not horrible. And you know, in a few weeks, even if it's just as short as a few weeks ago, I think I'd have been thrilled with this. But I 
think I can do better. Uh, let me show you what happened on the back side here that I'm not really excited about. You see that right there? Like the mold uh, broke apart, and I knew it did um, when I was pulling it out, and, and I thought, well, I'll just sand that off. Well, I shouldn't... I'm beginning to think I shouldn't settle for that kind of stuff. I'm thinking I should do this right and get a part that comes out that I can be happy with. So I'm going to redo this guy, even though it's probably one of my better castings to date. Um, I think we're going to do it again. So uh, I'm going to do it again. I'm going to ram it up. I'll show you the pour because you know you see you love to see that metal coming out of the, out of the crucible, and we'll see if we can't uh, we'll see if we can't do this better this time. All right, pour number two. <clears throat> I got uh, a limit of my vents, so I guess I went all the way through. All right, so I already know this one's not going to be perfect uh, as well, just because, let's see if I can see this. You can see right here, the R and the G didn't release, the A there didn't release. All right, let's open it up, let's see what we got. Yeah, we're a little bit hot still, but... I think, uh, hard for me to tell from here, huh, I've entered it on the other side, but I think, I don't know, I think it's maybe a draw. <laughs> so, all right, well, I picked the better of the two. Turns out the first one was the best one. I didn't get better, I got worse. That's all right. And uh, I got it all, I finished it up, got it all cleaned up, and there it is. Uh, I picked red because I'm pretty sure he likes red. I've seen, I've seen evidence that he likes red. It's either that or he has a big case of red paint that he got for cheap and he's just using it up. But I think he likes red. So this is the plaque. Uh, I think it turned out pretty darn well. It's the biggest thing I've actually cast. Well, biggest, I guess, in square, square, I almost said inches. Square, square centimeters, square meters, square whatever. It's the biggest thing I've made this way. Barely fit in my flask, as you saw. But uh, I think it came out pretty darn nice. So uh, I'm not going to mention any names. I think you probably a lot of you probably know who it is. I'll let him, if he wants to talk about it, great. If he doesn't, that's great, too. So I just made it because I wanted to give it to him. All right, guys, that's it for, for this. Um, you have a great day.